Hey guys, today I have some Christmas DIYs for you. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you some of the Christmas decorating I've done in my house. I always like to see how other people decorate to get ideas. But if you don't want to see that, you can certainly stop the video after the second craft. All right, let's get started. For this first DIY, I'm using this small wreath. You can find these at lots of places. I got this one from a thrift store, but I've seen them at Dollar Tree as well. You're also going to need some greenery of some sort. I'm using, I went out into our woods and just cut down a couple of baby cedars. We have quite a few um, cedars and we're surrounded by trees. So there was some that I could cut down on our property. But um, you can get greenery from just about anywhere. You might have enough trimmings from your Christmas tree. And I think it looks great when people make a swag to um, mix the greenery. I think that looks really, really good. But I'm just showing you here. I'm using the door. This is the door that the swag is going to hang on on the other side, on the outside. But I'm um, just holding it up here to... Think about how long I need the swag to be. And don't mind around my door and windows, we still have not done our trim work around our doors and windows or the baseboard either in our house. We just moved in last year and we've been finishing the house. Um, we built the house on a budget and we've been finishing it as we've been living in it. And we always have a project going on but trim is the next on the list. So what I'm doing here is just making the base for our swag. You want to make a base um, for your swag that everything else will be tied to. And so I'm just trimming up, trimming this up to the basic shape that I want the base, but when we get done with it, it will look completely different as we layer on more greenery. So what I'm doing is just using these zip ties and um, these will be hidden. I'll, I'll switch from zip ties to twine here in a minute, but I'm just taking up the trimmings of this greenery and making little bundles and tying it onto the main stick of the swag. So you'll want at least one pretty long sturdy stick to be the base of your swag. You'll want, when you're trimming, you'll want the back of your swag to be flat so it lays flat against the door or what, wherever you're hanging it. So you'll trim pieces off of the back um, so that it'll lay flush up against the surface that it's hanging on. And then you're literally just going to take little bundles of trimmings of greenery and just fill in the holes and shaping your swag to the shape that you like. And then once you get the swag nice and full with all the layers, you can go back with some scissors and just trim it up to the shape that you like. I got these bells from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to remove the little wreaths and bows that are on them and then spray paint. They're a little bit too shiny for my taste, 
So I'm going to spray paint them an antique gold color. This wreath is going to act as a hanger for our swag. And so I'm just going to use twine to attach this swag to the wreath, going around that main stick center of our swag. I'm using some green ticking stripe fabric and I just cut it into a strip to use as ribbon and I'm going to tie a bow and hang it right underneath this little wreath. Now that the gold paint has dried, I'm just going to take some antique wax and dirty up the bells just a little bit to make them a little older. The tops of these bells didn't look so great once I took their accessories off, so I'm just going to wrap some uh, thicker twine around the tops here, hiding that, and I will make sure to um, leave a hole, a small hole in the top so that we can hang our bells onto our swag. This was completely by accident, but this whole swag ended up looking sort of like an angel. I thought that was so neat that I really didn't mean for it to, but it did turn out sort of having the look of an angel. Let me know if you can see that as well. For this next DIY, all you're going to need is some of these treat sacks from the Dollar Tree. And I bought these um, this week, so they still have them in my store. 
but um, all you'll need is these and some twine and some scissors. There won't be any gluing or anything um, to this, but you'll also need some tape, some regular clear plastic tape if you're going to do it the way I'm doing it. So I tested out, I cut the back off of one of the treat bags to test out using Mod Podge to keep the edges from fraying because this is sort of a tightly woven, um, you know, almost burlap-like material here. But you can see there that it got dark on the material where I had the Mod Podge, so I didn't like that. So my solution is on the back to just use some regular like gift wrapping tape to um, tape along the edges on the back to keep them from fraying. So you're just going to cut the front off of each of these treat sacks and um, cut along the edges, leaving the top where the little pull string is, pulling the string out. And then we'll use that little pocket on the top there where the pull string was to slip it onto our twine to make a banner. And obviously the more packs of these that you buy, the longer your banner can be. The space where I wanted to hang it is just about four feet wide. I wanted to hang it on my hutch in my kitchen. So I didn't need a very long banner, so I only got two packs which made um, six little um, pieces to go on the banner. I used half of a skewer stick from the Dollar Tree as a large needle to tape the twine onto it to send it through the top little pocket of each rectangle on the banner. And that made it very easy to string on, you know, each little uh, rectangle. This project was so easy and so cheap and really it came out to be super cute. So if you can find some of these little treat bags of the Dollar Tree, grab them up. There are so many different things you could do with them and they're great quality. They're very pretty. I bought these candles off of Amazon and I can link them in the description box. Some of them came with suction cups so you can put them in your window and some of them didn't. So those I just used the Dollar Tree uh, candle holders and you can see here I had to tape these because they didn't fit down in there. But um, it's a good alternative to outdoor lights that you have to get on a ladder and hang on your house. Maybe some people can't even do that. In our house, we're tucked back in the woods, our house isn't on a street, and so no one would really see Christmas lights if we hung them up except for us. And so this is a good alternative to outdoor lights. People can still see them on the outside and it just gives a pretty effect when you pull up to your house. Um, and it just doesn't take that much effort, but it's a good alternative to hanging lights on the outside of your house. As I mentioned earlier, our house is newly built and we are still finishing up some projects in it, but one project we just finished up was our hearth and putting in our wood stove. I just wanted to show you guys how I decorated it around it this year. And so first off, I just cleaned up around it and the glass in a wood stove can get very dingy very quickly when the flames are hitting the glass. 
And so what you just do is take a wet paper towel and some ashes from out of your fireplace and you wipe it onto the glass and the ashes, um, what the ashes are made of is abrasive and it will um, scrub away the soot on the glass of your wood stove. One of the reasons why we got the hearth and um, wood stove installed before we even have our trim done in our house is that last year we had a winter storm as a lot of people did and we were without power for four nights and so we had to go spend the night at my parents house for a couple of nights and then a couple of nights we stayed at our house using a kerosene heater but a wood stove was definitely high on my priority list this year. I got this garland from Hobby Lobby at 50% off, so they were originally $50 each, which was very steep. I would never have paid that much for them. At first, I passed these up because you really can, if you look at this close, tell that they're they look kind of plasticky. But um, then I realized, really, from a distance, they look it looks great, and um, it's pretty dark in this corner over here around the wood stove. Our mantle is pretty shallow. It's actually a two by four, so it's a very shallow mantle. And so I thought just spreading out, you know, one garland on each side would work out well. And I'm just putting these old brass candle holders that I have thrifted over the years. And just tucking that in among the garland. And at first, I put a string of lights. And I was going to put um, some real candles in the candle holders. But then after um, I got that done, I realized I wasn't great. I wanted to be able to light the candles, but I couldn't because it was so close to the wall. And I wasn't crazy about the string lights. So I ended up taking the string lights out, but that's just one option to string some lights through a garland. I have a few wooden Christmas trees. My husband made a couple of these on his lathe and his workshop. But I also have these little wooden ones from the Dollar Tree, and I don't know if they have them this year because I bought these in years past, but I do know that this year Dollar General has some that are actually cuter and have more detail, and I just stained mine with some um, antique wax, and they're very cute, and I'm going to spread them out in the garland as well. My husband has to have this log next to the um, stove here so that he can split small kindling on it. And so just to dress that up a little bit, I took some cedar trimmings left over from the swag that I made. And then on top of that, I just put a wooden box and the garland from the last video on my channel. And I put that in there. I'm going to use this garland on my tree next year, but for this year, I'm just going to put it in this box and use it over here on the hearth. And then I'm just going to hang um, the our stockings underneath our uh, underneath our mantle on these pegs. And if I can find, I bought these a couple of years ago, but if I can find the link to them, I'll link that in the description box. So I really wanted to be able to light the candles but couldn't so I did go on Amazon and buy these battery powered candles. I will leave the link in the description box for these but I really like them because they have a remote and they flicker and I like the way the, the flames look 
compared to the other ones that I put in the windows. So I took the, the string of lights out of the garland and then I put these candles um, in, in here instead of the real ones. So here's our tree over in the opposite corner and that's part of the reason why I wanted lights on the mantle because it would kind of balance with the lights, the Christmas lights on the other side of the room and the other corner. But we just usually get a live tree from Home Depot and um, we decorate it really simply every year. I never use, you know, really matching ornaments. We just put the ones on that we've always had and some of the ones that the kids have made. And then here's how I wrap my presents pretty much every year. I just use brown paper and then every year I change up what ribbon I use and what tags I use. And this year I just cut some of that ticking stripe fabric into strips to use as ribbon. And then I like to make a little tag that looks like a stamp if I can. I just Google vintage stamps and then I just use um, different vintage images to use to make tags or to make tags that look like stamps on the on the package on the presents and um, sometimes I just use twine to tie them with and then sometimes I use different ribbon. A lot of times for the men's presents I just use the twine and then I dress up the women's presents just a little bit more. So it's very simple and very, very affordable. And if you Google vintage um, gift tags or Christmas tags online, there are so many options to choose from. A couple of presents I wrapped in regular paper, like for the small kids in my family, because kids like colorful wrapping paper. But I have some of this that my mom gave me. Um, the ones with the teddy bears on them are from when I was little. Um, so it's very old wrapping paper. And I always try to keep my eye out for some vintage wrapping paper when I'm out thrifting. So pretty simple and traditional, but I've always liked basic um, decorations and traditional um, decor. It's sort of homey and definitely affordable. I might share some more decorations before Christmas, but we're definitely getting down to the wire now. And if I ever share something like this, I'll always just tack that sort of thing on the end of my videos. I'll probably do another Christmas video after this one, but then focus more on winter DIYs and just general DIYs after that. I hope everyone's having a wonderful December. I know it's a busy month for most people. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.